Hey everybody, it's BC here, and welcome to another episode of Hellion. So last episode, we, what did we do last episode? We went and did a little bit of looting, we got our first circuits, and we learned a few things. A thing or two about uh, what can and can't be recycled, and needless to say, not a whole lot you can get actually get back. Uh, I was trying to look for a life support module last episode, I didn't have the best of luck around here. Uh, mainly because the respawn timers uh, being offline. Uh, so today I actually want to head out to Aerodale because uh, Aerodale and Tior is where you can find not only the life support modules but I want to get a couple of solar panels as well. And the solar panels not only help me get some more power generating when I'm refining because right now I'm gaining a grand but when I get that refinery running I'm losing half a K every second so it's it's pretty demanding. Uh, at the same time too I can use the solar panels to uh, I'm actually going to get a warp cell printing while I'm chatting away. i got to get some hydrogen in here. I know I do have one warp cell already, but I want to get a second one just in case. Uh, I know it's supposed to be more efficient of a ship, but I don't know how much it's going to be to go out to Aerodale and jump around moons and come back. But especially if I'm taking a couple of modules with me. But we'll get that crafting. And then... I am going to oh yeah, go over and discuss what we're doing here. So, I uh, can't really see from the bridge. I was thinking about moving stuff around, but what I would end up doing is uh, I'll have a solar panel module on this side to it. That way it extends the power supply in the cargo bay away from the station. And then I'll do the same thing on the lifeboat side where I have the lifeboat solar panel module and that pushes it out that side and that way it leaves room for the, around the airlock to get a mule here eventually or Sarah or the Argus or whatever you want to call it. I, I'll always call it a mule because it's always been a mule to me. And then probably put the lifeboat at the end of the fabricator and that way it spreads the station out. I do plan on getting a much bigger station. I've actually already thought about getting multi-levels going using the, the S modules because the S modules they go up about a floor get two or three of those going up and then you can have a two level station. Be interesting to try, there'll be a lot of repair work to do that over time, but with that being said, let's go back to the fabricator, pick up the solar power, uh, the, the warp cell, and start heading our way. And that is still going up. Oh, how far? How long? Still a minute. Wow. I did do a little bit of refining of the stuff that was on the ship, like the armatures and the plating and stuff like that. And I got, got a fair amount in there right now. We got about a hundred of each. Uh, I never did actually check to see. No, it's not going to let me take them out of there. Or will it? No. I was going to see if I could actually put those parts in the cargo bay, for instance. We might actually have to get an IC module if we want to stockpile this stuff. Uh, 40 seconds, so I'm going to let this finish, I'm going to undock, and I'm going to head out to Aerodil, and I'll, I'll meet you there. Alright, well, getting out to Aerodil at this point in time is not going to happen until I get a better uh, singularity detonator. So I came out here to Broken Marble, just see what there is, and I thought maybe we'll hit up a couple of derelicts and see if we can find some more circuits. This one's actually just leaving the debris field, so... This one might be safe. Let's go check this out. And again, it spawned today or yesterday or whatever. I don't know what the second one is. Those ones just spawned too. And I think this one I might have already been to. But we'll go here and check it out. Uh, yeah, um, stage two with this detonator. It's going to take about half a warp cell and uh, about 22 minutes. Not happening. Not at this point in time, <laughs> but I think I only need like three, three circuits to get like a tier three, tier four. I don't know. I don't know if uh, this ship actually has a limitation to the the tier of parts that I can have if they even have that implemented. But we'll go check it out and see what happens. See what we can find. Uh, I know I can go to Broken Marble too and find power supplies there if it really comes down to it. Or uh, solar panels. 
kind of weird that solar panels are in a military. You'd fi figure they'd be at least in an industrial. Just be like the power supply module, for instance. Why it's in a in a military zone? That's doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, speaking of derelicts and modules, I do have a a full thing of hydrogen on me, so we should be good to go. And where is this thing? All right. Hopefully, I don't take too much damage. I just gotta remember now, if I see a Tesla ball, don't even bother touching it. It's useless. If I'm gonna jettison it from the fabricator, I might as well just go out into the airlock and throw it. And some of these debris are getting pretty close. That one just went right over. And it's not the safest thing to be doing. Especially doing a suicide burn to a derelict outpost that could blow up at any time. The only fortunate thing is, is they don't actually have like changing orbits. Like if a chunk of debris hit this, technically the orbit should change. So when you're when you're parked next to something, a chunk of scrap hits the derelict you're parked next to. And it starts moving with you in it, and next thing you know, you're about six kilometers away from your ship. And that was actually a pretty heavy hit. Come on. Time's a ticking here. Alright, 99%. We're good. This thing's a beast. At least I hope it is. I should have actually checked that before I left. I don't know why it fills this up automatically, but it did. Uh, maybe it was transferred over. Okay, let's get over here. Looks like looks like the weather's clearing up, but that could be famous last words too. All right, I am gonna pluck absolutely everything I can off of this thing. My luck, there won't be any circuits at all. Okay, take that and that. Okay, maybe that's the case. How far fast is it going? Hmm. All right. We'll go to the next one then. At least I got some scrap out of it. I think uh, a large debris hit it. I know it's not a server des desync. But anyways, I'll bring it back to the next ones. Okay, we're at the next ones here. Uh, I did have a p bit of a hull breach, so that uh, solved our excess air problem. Uh, I did have to repressurize the ship a little bit. Let's get in here. Let's get out. I cleared out my inventory too, so... Let's go see if we can find some more circuits. Oop. Uh, uh, come on. Okay. Uh, I had to make sure I had my visor down. And... And of course we're getting pelted again. Hopefully... Hopefully we find something good here. Even more circuits would be nice. But yeah, I saw that we lost uh, about 170 units of air. So-called air resource. Alright, let's go check this one out first. Let's see if we can find any circuits on the outside. Because, judging by the looks of it, 
I don't think we'll be able to get circuits from recycling anything. I think only, well, except for like fried electronics and I think there's one other thing that will give us some resources or some circuits. But I don't see anything out here except for armatures. So let's go in. See what we can find in this one. We'll go ahead with that other one and then do another scan. See if we can find a life support module. If not, then we'll head out to Broken Marble and look for some solar panels. And I'm getting so many warp cells, I don't know what to do with them. Recycle them. I'll take it anyways. It's always good to know that you got a full, uh, full warp cell or two. Just for emergencies. Is there like nothing in here? Oh, this one was a bit of a bust. Sure. See what we have, see what we can get for recycling the cup. Nothing. Oh, at least we got a little bit of decoration now. Oh, this one was a little disappointing. Let's go check out the other one here. Where is it? There it is. Oh, that's the tug. Uh, there it is. Let's see if we can find anything interesting. And of course, by interesting, I mean of the electronic circuitry nature. I guess we'll grab a little bit more of this, why not? I haven't really looked to see what we need more of, whether it be the alloys or the fibers, and that was a close one. It's almost like those two derelicts were racing each other. Not even derelicts, they're debris. All right, um, so why well, it's always good to stay close to these things. Get some sort of shielding. Really? Nothing in this one? Alright, wow. It's getting a little, a little crazy out here, so we might have to make this quick. Uh, am I the right way? Yes, I am. Okay. Nothing. And nothing. This is a fresh spawn, too. So there should be something. And I'm not seeing much. Just a lot of sparks. Wow. I don't think I got anything out of this one. Hmm. Alright. Fair enough. Look for circuits. I'm not seeing anything. Just a lot of shattered plating. <laughs> I like the right mouse button and I thought the oh, thing just uh, went flying on me. Yeah, I'm not seeing nothing. Okay, uh, where is my ship? I will meet you back there wherever I can find it. There it is. Alright, so uh, I'll do a scan. I'll either see you at the next derelict, the next life support module, or at Broken Marble. Well, I haven't found too much as far as uh, anything else spying around Burner, but I came to Broken Marble, and as you can see on the screen, I found a solar panel. So we're going to go check this out. I might go look inside that T module, see if there's anything inside there. But we're actually out of a debris field, which is good. So let's match and go check it out. I actually want to look inside the things before I pick them up. You know, just fix them up, make sure that they're not going to blow up in transit. Uh, so I found one solar panel. I want to find one more and a life support module. 
Maybe this will be the trifecta I'm looking for. If I can't find the life support module around here, we m might have to get a, another detonator made. Probably at least a tier three. Oh, and we're just entering the field now. Oh, wow. It's a good thing I saved before I got here. All right, let's, let's go inside quickly. Or actually, let's just... Yeah, let's go inside. See if we can find anything first. Do any repairs inside if we have to. Oh, warp cell. Always nice to have warp cells. So many warp cells. Well, at least it wasn't a turret in here. Alright, well, let's do a quick repair and then we're gonna grab onto it and get out of here. Okay. That's about all. So let's get out of here. And back to the ship. Let's check this T module out, just see if there's anything inside. Hopefully, no turret. Because I know these T modules, they have a turret stand right there. And it looks okay. Besides, it doesn't have power, so the turrets won't be active, anyways. I'll just take a quick little peek inside. Oh my god, now that I've made those warp cells, I'm going to find them absolutely everywhere. <laughs> like I said, absolutely everywhere. Alright, uh, anything else in here worth, worth nabbing? I don't think so, and I don't really need a T-module right now. Okay, so I'm going to grab all that solar panel, and I'll bring you back at the, the next find, as soon as I find my ship. There it is, in the sun, of course. Okay, I found a life support module. I was bouncing back and forth between burner and broken marble. Uh, needless to say, that T module I was just in at the last clip blew up about two seconds after I quit recording, so that was a close one. But uh, yeah, as you can see, we got some more fresh spawns. It's actually the next day for me, and burner started getting populated, and this just happened to show up. And it seems to be in somewhat decent shape. So we're gonna match, we're gonna go out. I gotta check my ship. I'm down to 84%. Took a lot of debris. Wow, I have so many warp cells. <laughs> we might actually have to start recycling a few of them. But let's go out and check it out. Uh, there was some, I actually forgot about the repair nodes on the solar panels are actually outside on uh, where the hinges are. So I went out there and I got it all fixed up. At least I think I did. I had a few game crashes, a few disconnects, early access stuff. Still, for not even being point three, it's it's a pretty good game, considering what it was in the back in the days of point one. Oh my god! All right. Oh, and we're just hitting the field, of course. Okay, that's good. So let's just kill this thing right away. I'm gonna repair it as soon as I get there. And why, am I, why is my light off? It's not off. Okay. Well, let's uh, grab what we can outside. Okay, oh, there's a spot right here. Use our magic tool. Uh, yeah, that's one of the things that happened to me. I was trying to, in the middle of repairing the solar panel, I got one side done, I went to the other side. And the hole wasn't being fixed, and my gun wasn't being, or the welding tool wasn't depleting. And that's how I knew that I had somehow an offline desync or whatever the case may be. Oh, there's another spot here. Oh, that's a big one. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the crew quarter. So I've got one solar panel. I have now had the life support module. I would like to find one more solar panel, but what we'll do is, after I get this fixed up, we'll dock it and then we'll head back out to uh, Broken Marble and just happen to see if we get one more solar panel. If not, we're just going to take this back in 
get all set up. No, I'm pretty sure these things don't have turrets. I could be wrong. But again, we're so close to Bathurst, so it should not be an issue. I don't think these do anyways. If it was, I would have been dead by now. Alright, let's fix this up quick. Fortunately, the amount of damage it takes is, is actually less than what I can repair, so... Uh, I think we are good. Let's actually grapple this. Oh, jeez, we're getting into some bad weather here. And we'll dock it to the light the solar panel. And then we'll get out of harm's way. So I will do that. And I'll bring you back when I got it repaired and back up Broken Marble. Alright, well, I did another check around uh, Broken Marble and I didn't find another solar panel. I could wait around, checked out a few derelicts, but the fact of the matter is I have one solar panel and one life support, and I have them completely repaired, and I want to keep them that way. So I decided to come back here, and I figured I might as well get him into the station, and we can always find another solar panel later and add it. It's not like we've got the, the Argus anyways, which is going to go right here on the airlock. So what I want to do is I want to get myself in a position where I can undock modules and be able to move stuff around and at the same time park next to the station so I don't float away too far. And I'm going to do the same idea. I think I think I'm going to put the solar panel at the lifeboat first. Actually, no, let's put it on the power supply side first. And the fabricator's going to, or the, and the life support module is going to go in between the fabricator and the command module. Okay, and then go ahead and match. And so now I got to go into the station and do some depressurizing. Uh, go in here, helmet down first. Uh, my uh, jetpack was getting low on oxygen. Fortunately, I had a couple of small containers uh, in one of the lockers on the ship here. Uh, one of the drawers, in the drawer under the locker near the power room, actually has a, a slot for these small resource can canisters, which I thought was quite interesting. Because normally you had to put them on the shelf, and they took up. Uh, a whole slot on a shelf, but now you have a slot in a drawer where you can put four of them. So that's good. Oop, that was a little bit of a hiccup. So now, I'm going to go in, I'm going to depressurize the airlock, the command, uh, the command module, and uh, I'm going to do just the... I shouldn't actually have to do anything else except for the command module. So what I'll do is I'll go into the lifeboat first, pull the docking clamp in there, then go back onto the command module side, and pull the docking clamp on the fabricator side, and then I'll be able to actually move them both around. I will have to, might have to top up my jetpack. We'll see. But now, this is where having the life support panel up in the command module comes in handy. And apparently I have the power turned off here. Come on. Yes, I do. That's fine. We don't need the power here. So now, uh, let's see. Lifeboat. I'll go on this side. And I'm going to pull that lever. And then fabricate it. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not pulling them yet. I gotta do a little bit of repairs there. Uh, let's get some light here. Uh, let's not close the door. Well, I guess it doesn't matter if I close the door or not. Okay, so now we go upstairs and we depressurize everything. Well, not everything, just the command module. Uh, I hate this elevator. It's not even an elevator, it's just a zero G shaft. That is it. Oh yeah, I changed the logo on the command module, so now we got these <laughs> these pugs with with heart glasses everywhere. 
All right, so uh, let's uh, depressurize everything. Uh, I'm just gonna depressurize these doors too because I don't know which one is which. And then with that, then I will probably disconnect the light bulb first. It's gonna take a minute for all this to be depressurized. I was looking at the output too, like um, how, how well the life support module works and it's like two and a half times these numbers. So it's air generation is five instead of two and the filtering rate was like 0.5 instead of 0.15. So it's actually pretty, pretty good. It's definitely worth it. Um, I gotta wait for everything to depressurize here. So I'll bring you back. Okay, we are good to go. Actually, I gotta check my car again. Uh, I actually ran out of power, so I had to turn the reactor back on. Uh, we're losing 150, so we are up and running again. So yeah, I got the airlock depressurized. I have this depressurized. I ran out of space in the air tank, so I had to vent 0.3 bars out of here and 0.2 out of the airlock, which unfortunately is terrible. But let's... Um, to the fabricator first. Now this is a pressure environment so all I have to do is pull that and this door should actually let me out. No, oh, maybe not. That will blow up the airlock. It's closer to the ship anyways. Since I have that depressurized and yes I did see that cancer. I'll deal with that later. Right now I have modules floating away. And I don't exactly have the best amount of oxygen. All right, so let's. Uh, what would be the best way to do this? I was thinking of taking the fabricator right up there and docking onto the life support module, but maybe. You know what? Let's just move it out of the way for now. I actually forgot to check to see if this thing has RCS or not. <laughs> yeah, that's something I forgot to do. Uh, when I, was, I think it was a lifeboat when I was docking that. I was almost at RCS on that one as well. Alright, let's see what we have in here. Low fuel. Okay, well. Then we're going to have to dock the life support module to this, I think. I think so. So I'm going to back it up. And then go in. And then before I disconnect the lifeboat, I want to make sure that that's got fuel. So just a slow drift. And off to the ship. And I really hope this thing has like, uh, RCS fuel. Because <laughs> this could be quite interesting. Actually, what I should do, I could do this smart when I get in the ship and then use the ship to dock it because I can use the uh, ship's RCS. The only problem with the life support module is it doesn't have a resource panel, so I can't transfer resources around. Wait. That could hurt. That really could hurt. Alright, close that. And pressurize. I'm hoping I left enough room for it. We shall find out. So then when I dock the fabrication module to the life support module, I go into the solar panel and disconnect the life support module from there. So how far is that drifted? Perfect. Okay, let's move her on over. Uh, what side was the door on? I can't even remember now. I think it was on this side. Let's not hit the station. Okay, let's try to nullify my speed here. 
and get a docking so I want the lift split module this side and we want the fabrication module which is right over there so this is going to take me take me another minute or two and I'll bring you back when I've got this docked to here okay I have it docked uh, I'm going to be doing some jetpack juggling here I think I'm all out of small containers but we should be okay uh, the only thing I'm worried about is if that uh, life support module has got enough RCS in it well the fabricator has a little bit I actually forgot to check to see when I was Actually, I don't think I could check active systems. I think it just showed the life support side of it. It didn't show, like, RCS control. Alright, let's head out. So, I'm basically lined right up. All I have to do is just disconnect this and just dock the, the port right to it. Let's get some light so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, when I first first got one of these solar panels when they first came out, it took me forever to find those uh, catalyst slots on the outside. Alright, so we go in here. Uh, we are going to pull this side, because this is the ship side. Oh, <laughs> wow. Uh, gravity caught me off guard there. Okay, and that's what we call a desync even though it shouldn't be happening in an offline single player. Alright, now let's see how much RCS fuel this thing has. I'm assuming that it's going to share with the fabricator. Where is that panel? There it is. Now I'm wondering if my ship's going to be in the way. It might be. So I'm just going to first check and see what, how much fuel this has before I go and move the ship. i got to keep an eye on my uh, oxygen too. Alright, what do we got? What do we got? Just enough. Good, 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 good. good. Alright, now to get this out of the way. Actually, you know what? I think I have enough room. I'll drop her down and slide it in. Alright. Yeah, that's uh, something definitely to keep in mind if you're, you're playing on the servers. If you get one of those fabrication modules, you got to put it somewhere where you don't, you're not vulnerable to a Jeffrey's tube. Because unfortunately, as you saw, that thing has a wide open. Wide opening, uh, R. Okay. I'm going to drop her down, and we want to go to Skylab. Hopefully not hitting my ship with the solar panel, and why are the controls backwards? backwards. Always oh, fun. Alright, let's try to get in here. Well, up and down our right. It's just forward and backwards are kind of messed up. I'm starting to wonder now, is that, am I going to have enough room with that power supply there? Wow, I got some strange drift going on. Yeah, I have no 
let's do it. Yeah, what's causing this? It's almost like it's unresponsive. I have no idea what's going on here. I think I need to do a little bit of a log out here. Uh-oh. Come on. Stop me. Yeah, no clue. thing all right I'm gonna try to do this off camera all right well trying to dock this wasn't working out too well uh, for one my controls were all over the place I couldn't figure out which way I was going and two I ran out of RCS fuel so as you can tell by how slow I'm moving I'm actually docking the entire station to this Unfortunately, I actually have a, quite a bit of RCS fuel in this command module. And even then, I still have the, the lifeboat attached and the cargo bay, so I can just run in there and transfer more if I need. But that's, that's definitely something I have to do once we get everything put together here, is make sure all the RCS tanks are filled up. And it's definitely a use for all that excess nitro that we get. All right, that should be it. You can definitely feel the weight of this just trying to move it. Nothing like trying to move an airlock around, that's for sure. Hopefully my ship doesn't drift away too far. So then we'll get this all connected and then I will Disconnect the life support module. Let's slow down, slow down. We have a lot of kinetic energy here. And there we go. All right, so that is the fabrication module, which is uh, over there. So now this part comes off. So I will take this off and go get the solar panel. The solar panel is going to go right in between these two here. And are we doing this solar? Actually, let's see how much room we have. I was actually worried about that fabrication module being too close to the power supply. Now nah, we're good. We got plenty of room. So I'll probably... I don't know where we'll stick it. Uh, I guess it all depends on which has more uh, RCS fuel. Uh, I think the lifeboat should be okay. So actually, I'm going to go into the cargo bay and I'll figure it and look at the systems and then I'll let you know what we're going to do. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to disconnect the lifeboat since I've already pulled the lever on the other side anyways. I uh, did fill up RCS, made sure it has plenty of fuel. Should get this turn this light off for now. Not that it really matters. Okay, so now we go run back out here. And, oh, I was hoping I was gonna be able to jump and fly into space. All right, so now let's actually pull this back a little bit. Make sure I got the room for the solar panel in there. I know it's got fuel, so I don't have to worry about it. And we just hit darkness. Oh, ow. I hit my head. Okay, uh, we want standard docking port B. So we'll back up. Yes, I do see the sparking in the cargo bay. It's not that big of an issue. And we'll park at about 100 meters. Probably not even 100 meters. I'm actually glad I turned the... The reactor on. Yeah, we'll just 
and nullify it the best I can. Now the smart thing to do would be to use it and just bring the solar panel in with the ship, but the problem is the ship's too big for that to work. Alright, so the ship is way over there. So I'm going to go grab the solar panel and I'll bring you back when I'm docking the outpost. Okay, I'm just coming in with the solar panel now. I had one of those... Oh yeah, I had coffee on moments. Needless to say, my coffee's been on the burner for about two and a half hours now. So it's going to be a little on the strong side. But that's okay, when you're working out in space, dealing with stuff like this, you don't have time for a coffee break. Alright, I should be clear that life support module one's funny, it's showing up, it's not showing up as Skylab or CM, it's showing up as a fabrication module, and I think it's because it's the last thing I docked to it. But, there we go. Oh, I'm a little, a little high up. Usually, I try to line up the, door, the windows of the doors, and then you know you never... You're more or less straight on. If you're not straight on, sometimes you'll float right through it. And it's happened to me many times before. You can already tell I'm off a little bit. And there we go. We are connected. We've got some more power, some solar panels, even though it's uh, nighttime right now. Now, where is my outpost? Oh, there it is. Okay, this should be a pretty easy dock. I should just have to pull it right back in, and we will be good to go. And then it's just a matter of repressurizing. Uh, the life support module actually has a couple hundred units of nitro as well, so that comes in handy for repressurizing. Alright, uh... Why are you not showing... Oh, there's this solar panel. Okay, I was like, well, where's the docking port? And again, this should be a fairly simple docking. Straightforward. So you can actually see that other pressure hazard symbol through the window. Okay, bring her down. And bring it up. Up too far. Oh, we're down too far now. Be so much easier to do if it was daytime. how they have a rotational alignment on here but they should almost have like a an alignment gauge so it's not just your rotational alignment but your uh, directional alignment I don't know what you would call it straightness get out a ruler and a straight edge I think we'll be good yes we are all right there we go. That is all done. So now I just gotta go get my ship, get out from underneath this solar panel, which is in a stupid place if you ask me, but you know, we gotta have an anchor point somewhere. So there we go. I'm gonna get the ship docked, get everything pressurized, and then we'll, we'll go check her out. Okay, I have everything connected. I have the station completely repressurized. Uh, I didn't find too much in there. I didn't find a warp cell. Uh, what, they actually still use these things? The air processing controllers? Uh, but yeah, we got some upgrades in here. Uh, there was, like I said, there was a little bit of nitrogen. There was no oxygen in here. Uh, I didn't find any goodies other than the warp cell. But then we're going to come back here and then we'll go over to the lifeboat side so we can get our power up and running. Uh, I got the solar panel actually on this side. We'll go through. All nice and bright in here. 
Uh, I have been finding the odd little thing in these contain compartments. I found a drill in the lifeboat, and there should be well, not the lifeboat, the life support module. And there should be a stim pack still in there as well. So this takes us into the lifeboat. And we got a bit of a logical issue outside I'll have to deal with. Alright, so let's go to the power supply, let's go to our solar panel module, and we'll deploy them. So, right now it gets us 300 power, which is actually pretty good. Uh, I'm actually going to turn the fabricator back on, wherever you are on this list here, right at the top. Now, I want to see... Uh, it's the outpost, I want to see if we turn the reactor off. Uh, we almost can, look at that. We're like 0.7 shy of actually being able to have everything running without the reactor. Don't really care about the crew quarter, we can probably turn the airlock off. Turn the reactor off and we are self-sustaining. And I do need more capacitors though, and then the solar panels I can get catalysts in there to improve the output of them. So that is not bad. So we're set, we have a proper life support system, we have our first set of solar panels, we have resource storage for days and days and days and, and like I said the life support module did have some nitrogen I put some oxygen in there and now I have no nitrogen but with that I think we're gonna call this an episode I've been that's actually the second day I've been working on this I you know I was dealing with some bugs and whatnot but yeah uh, I think next episode we're gonna Actually, let's go to the fabricator right now, because I, you know, I thought I saw a decay up there. I want to see what one of these detonators going to cost. I have two circuits on me, so let's see how much it costs. I'd like to get at least a level three or a tier three. So let's see what we have: fabricator, and we want the detonators. Where are they? Singularity cell detonator. So a tier two is three circuits. A tier three is six, and a tier four is nine. Wow, and I have two on me. Yeah, I have those two, and that's it. And that's not it. Where is it? There we go. Our first spent warp cell. Because I don't think you can do anything with a one percent. So we'll cycle that. We'll recycle some other stuff and call the episode here so yeah i uh, thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed if you did leave me a like and i'll see you in the next one later